Hi guys, John here. Electricians need to know. I know it's been a while since I've been on camera, but uh, I've had a lot of requests for grease. What's dielectric grease? What's the best grease to use? How do you use it? And there, I looked, and there's probably 30 videos on uh, dielectric grease, and 90% and of them are for automotive. Um, I'm going to talk about like Zinsco panels and uh, electrical panels and uh, things like that. Well, there's only one grease I've used for the last, I don't know, 25 years or so. And it's, uh, it's a grease called uh, Dexit. D-E-O-X-I-T. Deoxit. <laughs> okay, Deoxit grease. Here's a, there's a tube of it. It's a brand new tube. It says CP, copper particles. So this is conductive. There's copper particles in that one. And this one is NP, no particles. Um, Keg Laboratories makes this stuff and it's really good. Now the reason it's better than just using white lithium grease and things like that is um, it has ratings to it and the the C rating is uh, 260 degrees. That's roughly 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, what, what I, I I cheat when I convert uh, Fahrenheit to, or centigrade to Fahrenheit, but I know the rule. But uh, what I usually do is double it, and then I just subtract 20, and that gives me close. Uh, to whatever I'm doing. So uh, about 500 degrees. So when the sun comes up in the morning, it spins all day in the air and comes back down. Well, if your panel is on the south side of your house, that electrical panel, if it's not shaded with bushes and stuff, it has a metal lid. That metal lid gets hotter than you can put your fingers on sometimes because when I would go out and troubleshoot stuff, I'd touch the panel, especially on the south side. And man, these lids are hot. So, uh, Dexit, Deoxit, whatever you want to call it, D-E-O-X-I-T, um, L-260, L uh, that's the C rating, 260. So 500 degrees, so it doesn't melt down in your panel, uh, even if your panel's in the sun all day long. So the stuff is really good. Now I use this copper particles for conductivity. Um, the main thing I used it for was uh, Zinsco buses that were deteriorated, and I would rub that copper particle into the bus uh, to give it a little more conductivity, especially in the areas that I had to sand a little bit. Now, speaking of sanding, uh, first thing I used in this is a uh, rubber abrasive. It's about 120 grit. This cleans up uh, it's not it doesn't it's non-conductive it doesn't take off the metal but it polishes the oxidation off the metal this stuff is really good and I started off with bigger ones and then I started buying these smaller ones uh, because I sold a little kit uh, that had a gauge to set the Zinsco breaker at 80 thousandths and uh, we had some of these bigger ones and these are the ones I use on my panels and stuff. But the little ones use the same. I also made uh, some sandpaper. Now I know sandpaper is not good. But I made a 2000 and I made a 4000. These little strips. And what this does is go inside the breaker and polishes the breaker. Now this is a 2000. Uh, I know that by the color. And, oh, I was wrong. There's the 2000, and I can feel the difference. Okay, and these are 4000s. Yeah, this is a 4000. So this kind of smooths the 2000s down a little bit. 
and polishes the, the inside of the breaker on both sides. Clean all that up. You know that it's been oxidized. If, if the breaker has been sitting around without grease on it, now most manufacturers lately have added, uh, they've added grease to their breakers. Not, that hasn't been uh, probably 10 years. So before that, you got the breaker, it's been sitting around on a shelf for uh, God knows how long, and it's been oxidizing. Uh, metal oxidizes. Uh, if it's been sitting out for two days, it's got a very little oxidation on it, but it does oxidize. So you gotta get that off of there. Uh, current has a tendency to pull that oxidation into the metal. It's called electrolysis. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you know about electrolysis, but the back and forth on AC and especially DC will cause the electrolysis to react. Now it takes, sometimes it takes years to react, but it does react and after 20 years your bus burns up in a Zinsco panel or, or a regular panel or, or a, a stab burns out or uh, there's a lot of different reasons for that and mainly it's oxidation. So if you clean up all the oxidation, you polish it with you polish it with one of these, uh, and I get this I get this little rubber thing uh, abrasive on McMaster car. They sell a line of them, and uh, there it is, right, McMaster car. So anyway, uh, they sell different kinds, and. Uh, they're really good to clean up the oxidation on metal buses or stabs, things like that, but they're too big to get into a breaker. So that's why I'd, I developed these. Uh, I made these. I took uh, 2000 grit uh, sandpaper, glued it down to a cardboard, a th really thin cardboard, flipped it over and put 4000 on the other side when I first started. That didn't work out so well because sometimes I forgot which side was which. So I decided to make uh, 2000s on both sides and 4000s on both sides with different colors so I would know what my 4000s are and, and where my 2000s were. Uh, I, bought a, I bought a paint can. I was going to get one of those. I, did, uh, I guess they're out in the garage. But it's just a regular paint can. I cut the end off of it and then I mill this down to eight, 80 thousandths. And then I put a little grease on it and I slid it into the breaker and set the breaker with a screwdriver, pried the, so it's nice and snug on that 80 thousandths. The bus on a Zinsco is 120 thousandths roughly. So if you grease it, slide that breaker on at 80 thousandths, it's gonna have a really good clamp and it's going to puddle. The little grease is going to puddle on there and it's going to take all the oxidation, um, well not the oxidation, it's going to take all the oxygen, uh, pardon me, out of the connection. So without oxygen in that connection, the current going back and forth and there's no oxidation in there, this thing's going to last for a long time. Now I've done a few hundred panels with this, this is test, um, with this process and a few hundred panels, how many callbacks have I had? You're right, I have never had one callback. And I think that's wrong. I did get a callback to the same house once, but it wasn't the panel's problem. So anyway, uh, those, this works. You take, take the oxygen out of the connection and it works. So if you use this grease, like I said, it's L260, it's 260 degrees C, it doesn't melt out of your panel. If the sun hits it all day long, it still doesn't melt out of your panel. It's got really good oxidation. It's got, uh, let's see, it's got, uh, it's a lithium based preparation. It's good lubricant. It's excellent wear resistant, excellent pressure resistant, uh, excellent oxidation, galvanic corrosion protection, uh, high dripping point, very high, characteristics, uh, operating temperature L L260 is minus 40 degrees C and 260 degrees C on the other end. 
Now the copper particle grease, same stuff, except it's got particles in it, copper conductive particles, used in areas where two contacts, uh, two different potential contacts don't meet uh, because you can't short them out with this stuff. So anyway, it's, it's a really good uh, lubricant for like relays and things like that, that that have some of these contacts, they get pitted and, and so forth. And if you smear, clean them up, and you smear this copper grease in there, they seem to like renew themselves and they last for quite a while. Um, it's good stuff, I like it. The electrical uses for grease, for this grease, is uh, antennas, antenna connections, battery terminals, bus bars, uh, commutators, uh, conductor rails, okay, we know about that. Uh, conductors, contractor, contactors, uh, disconnects, drying and processing equipment, high amperage and high uh, voltage applications. Very interesting. Industrial, electrical equipment, lifts, cranes, robotics, etc. Power tools, relays and switches, heavy-duty knife and step and rotary switches. Now, most of, it, most of the industry know about this stuff. They've been using this stuff for a long time, but electricians out in the field working on panels, they don't trust this. They don't understand it. Uh, so I'm trying to hammer it into you guys' head that once you take the oxygen out of that connection with grease, uh, that connection is going to be better, especially if you clean up all the oxidation before you do it. That's the big thriller here, is to clean it up, get the oxidation out of there, put grease on it, and it, it's like brand new and it lasts for a very long time. If you get a panel that's been sitting around in the sun for uh, six months and then the electrician comes along and throws all the breakers in, even though they've got even though they've got grease on the breakers, the stabs of that bus is has been oxidizing for six months in the sun, 120 degrees, 150 degrees. So anyway, we need to clean that up, clean it up with with anything you can, especially if you go to McMaster Car and and get one of these rubberized abrasives. Uh, these things will last you a long time and they clean up a lot of metal. They really do. So that's my grease story. I've used it for, like I said, at least 25 years. And this stuff is good. It's got a really high temperature and it doesn't leak out all over the place like regular old lithium grease does. And if you go to uh, Craig I'm sorry, Keg the Laboratories, they have a lot of new products. Uh, they have spray grease, they have uh, high temperature um, motorboat grease for motorboats and, and where the, the stuff is underwater and, and uh, it doesn't wash off. And uh, there's a lot of new products that they've come out with in the last 10 years that uh, have really brought them up in the industry, I think. So try this stuff. It's uh, it's amazing. Now they make uh, they make all kinds of cans and and tubes and and these I just stuck in my I stuck in my gun and I sold those. I sold like uh, eight tenths of an ounce in this and I sold uh, four tenths of an ounce in this uh, for my bus kits. But uh, it, it was easy just to squirt it in there and, and sell it. But, uh, but you can get it in this configuration also. Or tubes, you can get it in tubes. Uh, it's not that expensive uh, and it really does work. So don't be afraid to use it, guys. Thanks. Um, and for you older guys, uh, I picked up a generator about a year ago and I screwed up my back. So it... Uh, it wasn't the muscles, so I could handle the muscles. I can load an 80 pound or an 80 pound bags into into a concrete mixer all day long. But uh, the tendons, the tendons that hold the stuff together <coughs> at 75, 
they're not as strong as they used to be. So what did I do? I ripped the tendons out of my left leg. I ripped the tendons out of my back. I pulled tendons in my arms and it's not the muscle. I'm nice and I'm still nice and strong, but the problem is the tendons are getting older and weaker. So be careful. Limit what you're going to do as older the older you get because it's not fun, guys. It's not fun. Old age is not for the weary or something like that. Maybe I got that backwards. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I appreciate it.